everyone. Welcome to the live stream. Hope everybody's doing great this Friday. It looks like the chat's already rolling. Uh, sorry that we we're a little bit late. I actually, I've been having a problem with my software. It keeps crashing my computer when I turn it on. So I don't know what's going on. I might need to update it or something. Uh, but I had to kind of mess around with that. So sorry about the late start. But uh, again, hello, welcome. Uh, let's see who's in here. We got Danny, Robert, Jen's here, Philip, Silent Traveler, Mark, Robert, I already said hi to Robert, Alejandro, how's it going? Anyway, uh, so what are we going to do today? We're going to make some blanks using walnut shells. These produce some really neat looking blanks. Um, actually, I have a, a, a stopper that I can show you guys that I was kind of turning not too long ago. It's not finished yet, but... Let's switch to this camera view so you can kind of get an idea of what this will look like in the end. So pretty cool stuff. I actually, I wish I had some more of these things because uh, I really like the, the cool patterns that you get with these. Uh, so I only have so much, unfortunately, today, but I thought it'd be kind of fun to, uh, to play with them. So not, like I said, not too much, but I thought, you know, using these single pen blank molds from P-Town Subby, I got a bunch of them in the, the oven right now. Uh, we can kind of arrange them and have some fun, make some pen blanks. Uh, and I thought, you know, if you haven't seen walnut shells being cast or blanks made with them, uh, you guys might like it. So, uh, let's see here. Got a full bag, nice. Yeah, I know, I don't know exactly where to uh, get them necessarily. I don't know who gave me these either. I can't, I just can't remember. Uh, Brad Geiger sends me a lot of really cool, neat stuff, but I don't think he sent these. Uh, now, one thing to note, I don't know, I actually don't think these are stabilized. Um, I, I want to say they're not, uh, but you could stabilize them. I don't really think that you need to. Now, because, well, either way, uh, I don't know for sure, and, and I'm just uh, definitely, if these are not stabilized, you definitely need to dry them out. So I hope we don't run into any problems because I didn't, you know, previously dry these out. They have been in a Ziploc bag. Uh, but what I'm going to do is just toss them in the oven. Uh, just put them in a, a little cup here, I guess. Toss them in the oven, and hopefully that will flash off any... E even if they were stabilized, I would put them in the oven. It'll flash off any uh, moisture that's on the surface. Probably not going to be any. Uh, it's, it's been really dry here, but uh, if you're in a, an area where you have you know pretty high humidity, and I would say... I'm trying, I don't know, <laughs> the, the humidity here is so low that I don't even know what like medium or high is. I think our, like my shop is like in the teens. It's like 13 to 15% right now. There's pretty much no humidity here. So I usually don't have to worry about any surface moisture even. But if you're getting up, you know, above 30, 40%, uh, and that's kind of the average, uh, even if you stabilize something, uh, you know, it's not going to absorb a bunch of moisture, but you could have moisture sitting on that surface. And I actually ran into this problem with a pine cone that I cast at the SWAT symposium. Didn't even think about it. I didn't, you know, I didn't have access to a, an oven anyway, but uh, I didn't dry that off in any way or heat it up. And I'm pretty sure there was surface moisture like all over it. And even though it wasn't that humid there uh, at that point, uh, you know, it can get pretty, pretty high humidity in central Texas sometimes, but I want to say it was in the 40, 50% range and it, it had humidity on it. We dunked it and it totally... Uh, you know, had cracks and all kinds of problems uh, in that blank. So I always recommend, regardless, uh, you know, toss it in the oven, even if it's stabilized, just to flash off any moisture. So uh, let's see here. Let's stop and take... You started working for Technotool. Nice. Or, or you will start. Nice. That's cool, Rich. Nice. Let's see here. Doug's here. How's it going? Uh, I don't know where I got these shells, honestly. Somebody sent them to me. Uh, there's people like eBay, you can find them. Uh, I'm not sure. Somebody just got a bag full. Robert, where do you get them? Where did you get yours? Uh, maybe some people just collect them. They have them near them. I don't know. Let's see here. Let's see. Oh, hold on. I'm, I'm losing my screen. Sorry about that. Okay, a couple other things that I wanted to mention. So we'll get into that in a minute. We'll let all that stuff kind of warm up in the oven and, and, and get going. I uh, got a couple of little things I can share here real quick. Um, I finally turned that, uh, you know, one of those, those blanks that we made with stone coat countertops. This was, the, uh, this was the casting epoxy. Let me go double check the name of this. I don't want to screw that up. 
pretty sure that was the one yeah counter not countertop um it was not supercast it was the casting epoxy that's what they call it uh i think it overheated slightly it seemed like it it, it just was a little bit hot i think it got a little hot uh, but it was a two by two by about six and a half inch long blank um, we had a pretty big burl chunk on the one end, but I turned this up. It's going to be like a bottle opener or a pizza cutter handle or something like that. But um, it turned pretty well uh, and it turned out fine. I, I wouldn't say that it was any different than, you know, anything else, really. Not not too much. I, you know, personally, I prefer turning a Lumalite um, for like slight differences. It's just I'm used to it, I guess, probably. But I have a feeling, you know, this this seemed to turn, you know, fairly similar to just about any other epoxy uh you know that i've that i've tried so not too bad uh it turned out pretty cool i i didn't all i did was buff this i didn't put a ca finish or anything on uh, just kind of polished up the wood and uh, this stuff polished up fine it was you know no different than polishing anything else so that's good uh we still have more tests to do with the the stone coat stuff but and then i just wanted to share i'm going to be putting these up on my short run uh section of my website soon so i thought i'd just share that with you guys you'll you'll know first kind of um they'll be pr i'll probably try and get them up you know sometime this weekend so be looking for that i'll post pics on facebook if anybody's interested in those they're blue and white with uh those are uh, stabilized walnut and that's actually the same walnut that i got from the dancing goats on instagram uh robin and uh it, it was what i made the cutting board out of too and then I got one of these. A lot of people have been asking about these. Uh, this was the, the one that I made for the 25K giveaway with a pine cone and the, the blue to purple color shift in it. And it's the same type of blank that, that Jim Overton turned recently uh, of mine for, that I gave him at Maker Central. But it's a three inch blank instead of a four inch diameter. So that's gonna be going up pretty soon on my site. I just wanted to share that with you guys. So uh, with all that craziness said, why don't we get started on casting now? Here's the fun part, because we need to uh, come up with some ideas. We're going to be pretty much doing these. Uh, what I have is the, the two blank molds. Uh, so these are the P-Town Subby molds. They're about 7 eighths by 7 eighths by, oh, it says on the side, <laughs> by 5 and a quarter. Uh, so we'll just kind of do these two at a time. And, you know, like I said, we don't have a lot of shells, but we can kind of, you know, have fun with the colors. And I'll have you guys kind of help out with what do you want to see you know what colors do you want to see put with these these walnut shells so i don't know how we're going to do that we don't have any anything any special thing but um i'll try to kind of lean like lean it in a direction like like i'll say like we're going to make you know two or three colors or whatever and uh they're going to be solid colors and you know like opaque instead of transparent so let's kind of do it that way we'll do some opaque ones We'll do some that are kind of transparent. Um, let's see, what other types of things could we do? Um, I don't know, if anybody has any other ideas, we'll, we'll try some that are transparent, some that are opaque. I don't know how many we're gonna actually get. I'd say probably, I got four of those double blank molds in there and I think we can probably get definitely two of those. So we should be able to get you know four pen blanks, uh, maybe six total so there might be one other thing that we can kind of maybe do a, a mix of of clear and opaque you know transparent and opaque uh, so let's see here i'm not asking for colors right now yet guys <laughs> sorry i'm not even going to look at them um let's see here i just want to make sure that i uh you you ate some walnuts yeah Oh, what's happening to your, is it your lathe? Didn't hear any. What's going on with that, Doug? Oh, bearing in the Nova. Is it the, do you have the Galaxy? Because I had a problem with that one. Um, I don't, I mean, I don't even actually own, well, I have a Comet, but I don't, I don't own any other Technotool techni stuff now. Hey, Julie Bloomer, how's it going? Oh, Michael sells shells, nice. Uh, walnut shells? Wow, that's cool. If that's what you were talking about. Okay, so, hobby craft, nice, okay. Uh, I, I didn't do anything with these shells, they were sent in. I don't think that these ones are stabilized, you could. 
Uh, that will make things, you know, a little bit, it'll just make it so that it's not going to absorb any moisture. But I mean, walnut shells are so dense that it's not, it's really not necessary, I wouldn't say. Um, but, you know, it, it is not a bad idea, let's say, you know, you can go either way if you, if you have them. Uh, the one drawback to stabilizing them is going to be, you know, things like that are, are you really got to make sure that you dry them off, get all the, the cactus juice off the surface then bake it. Otherwise, it's just going to be a complete mess. Um, and even if you try your best, you can still get some, some of that, you know, excess on the outside, which is just going to be, you have to clean it all up. So, you know, not stabilizing, you're not going to have to deal with that, but you're going to have to deal with some moisture issues. Make sure you dry them, uh, you know, completely to 0% before you cast them. But either way, I, I think I've done both of them in the past and, and I didn't really see any big difference. Uh, you know, like I said, it's kind of, if you're set up to stabilize, fine, you know, no big deal. Uh, but if you're not, it's not really going to make any huge differences. All right, so now that we've kind of everybody chilled out on the colors, first one that we're going to do is going to be a transparent uh, blank. And so, you know, we could add some glitter. That would be kind of cool. I have glitter that we can add to, you know, maybe a tinted or even just dead clear uh, resin. We have... Um, you know, we could add a little bit of color in like the graffiti style blanks where you just kind of add some little swirls of color, but the whole thing's clear, you know. Um, we could do a little bit of each. So I'm going to be using a Lumilite Clear Slow Set. Uh, that'll give us, you know, plenty of time to kind of mess around with it. I even, I have the regular set, but I think that I'd rather just go with the slow on this and, and have a couple more minutes to mess around with it. Depending on what you're doing, sometimes you're going to want to I would, I would favor a, a faster setting resin, uh, personally, because otherwise you're going to be sitting there waiting. If it's something that you need it to, uh, you know, kind of start gelling up, uh, then, you know, frankly, I just, I, I wouldn't want to use a slow setting resin for that kind of thing. You'd mix it up and walk away. So I'm, I don't make stuff with glow in the dark powder. <laughs> I, I really hate that stuff. It sinks like a rock. It's hard to deal with. And then it's, it's, it's really abrasive on tools. So I don't generally make those, uh, unfortunately. Um, and I definitely don't make them in a brick. This wouldn't be that bad because you can just pop them out of the, uh, you know, the, the mold and they're pretty much ready. But I usually, I just kind of stay away from that stuff. It just makes things harder. Um, I mean, I could, I guess, but <laughs> I really don't. I don't want to turn it personally. Acrylic shavings. I don't have any shavings to, to cast, unfortunately. So let's get, this is going to be probably kind of hard to do without like calling on specific people to, to do stuff. Um, let's see here. How about this? Why don't we do just one of those, like I was saying, one of the graffiti style. Uh, that'll be one of them. And then let's try hey arnold how's it going uh let's try what do we have another color uh, oh there's one fluorescent orange and blaze orange mica that wouldn't be too bad so let's do and so for anybody that doesn't know what graffiti is uh, it's a style of blank where it's basically clear and then i just add some fluorescent colors um, i have fluorescent orange green yellow red purple, blue, uh, so all these different things. You can even add just like interference powders, but what you're doing is adding a tiny amount. So I'll kind of, let's do that, because that's a good blank, you know, for, especially for people that don't really know what they are. Let's do that on the first round. I'm just checking these. We're starting to get warmed up. Now for the oven, a uh, couple notes. I generally leave them, if you're trying to heat up a silicone mold, I, I recommend just put it in there for like 30 minutes at like, I have mine set uh, around 125 something like that, 125 degrees. And I know I, I, I've been kind of all over the place with recommendations on, on temperatures. It just kind of depends. Uh, with silicone molds, they can kind of handle, you know, just leaving them in there longer. Um, a lot of times for HDPE molds, I, I keep it at the same temperature. Um, so I just leave it at 125 or so for like, however long it takes me to work with blanks. And that generally will heat it up enough. That's usually about 15 to 20 minutes. So I'm just going to leave these in, you know, you saw they right before I started the stream is when I put them in. So it's only been, you know, like 10 or 10 or 15 minutes so far. 
Uh, yeah, Jeff, I just, I've been using Illumilite forever. <laughs> so I, I generally, I know exactly how it works. I like the speed, you know, it's a faster setting resin. Um, even their slow set is, is fast. It's, it's a 12 minute working time and then you can pull them out of the pressure pot uh, in a couple hours. So I like it personally, uh, it just works. And plus all my products are made with it. So I'm just not really inclined to work with other stuff when you know all of the products I sell are made with Illumilite anyway, the, the pen blanks and stuff. So I just find it easiest to work with personally, but you know, it really doesn't matter. Uh, I know a lot of people like having you know, 30 to 45 minutes of working time. The problem I have with that is a lot of what I make for, for my pen blanks, they're, they're color swirl blanks, which means I'm gonna have to wait till the end of the working time to actually pour them to keep those colors separated. So I'm not gonna mix up resin and then walk away for 45 minutes and then come back, you know? Uh, Alumalite clear, the slow set, you know, 12 minutes or so, 10 to 12 minutes, that's fine. You know, I can kind of wait around, get some stuff done, and then I'm ready to rock. So I just kind of prefer it. It just works good for me, uh, but it just depends. So let me get my little booklet out. Sorry guys, I'm a little all over the place that my computer crashing when I started up kind of threw me off again. So today is 621, is that right? Jeez, June is flying by. Uh, you guys will be happy to know it's a little bit cooler up here in uh, northern Nevada this week, so, or at least for the last couple days, so I'm not just boiling. It's been pretty warm. So we're casting walnut shells. And the first one, so again, what we're going to be doing is we're going to make two pen blanks, basically. And it's going to be, you know, this, these P-Town subby guys. They're seven-eighths square by five and a quarter long. Uh, I want to say that they hold about... <laughs> oh, what do they hold? I don't know. 75, 80, 90 grams, something like that. So I'm just going to overshoot and say 100 grams per tube or, you know, per blank. So 200 total. Um, another thing, you know, you were asking me about what, Illumilite. I like the one-to-one -one ratio, mix ratio with Illumilite clear. One-to-one uh, -one is so much easier to just mess, you know, so we're doing 200, so you just split it in half. It's 100 times two. 100 of part A and 100 of part B. Now, in this case, we're going to be going for clear. And one little tip that I recommend, if you're using Illumilite, and, oh, that's the wrong camera, Illumilite clear, not Amazing ClearCast. That's a totally different product. Amazing, uh, Amazing ClearCast is an epoxy, and it, this doesn't work. It's just for Illumilite Clear. Uh, and, and this doesn't, again, apply to any other epoxy or any other product. But for dead clear castings, I always recommend adding a little extra Part B just to make sure, because if you end up with a Part A heavier mixture, let's just say you didn't measure properly or your, your scale was off or you didn't mix you know, well enough, if it's part A heavy, you can get some kind of white streaks in there and you really don't want that on a clear one. So we're going for a graffiti look. So for this, what I'm gonna do is, and we'll get a couple different colors going. I think we're gonna do the same ones because these can get a little bit kind of difficult, but I find that pink, let's see, let's switch to this camera view. I really like uh, one of the standard ones that I do for these graffiti, I do fluorescent green, fluorescent pink, and then I do interference green, interference red, or purple, one of the two. Let's see here, where's my interference red? Nope, that's not it. I gotta find the right one, here it is. Okay, so I have interference. These are just Pearl X interference powders, green and, and red. And the red is kind of a pinkish hue. Um, that's why it kind of matches. And then I use Illumilite's Pewter as kind of a, it's like a, I don't know, a smoky look kind of thing. So that's kind of my standard graffiti blank. So let's do a couple of those and then we'll have walnut shells in there. So that'll be pretty sweet. So I got to make notes. Uh, that's what I, th these types of things are what I put in my notebook. So I'm over here writing, you know, I put how much total resin, what the, the mix of A and B is going to be. Uh, it's a graffiti blank. So I'm going to be using um, fluorescent, what did I say? Green, fluorescent pink, sorry. Pink, 
fluorescent green, interference green, and interference red, and alumilite pewter. Now, the majority of the blank is going to just be clear resin. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up my 200 total grams of resin here. Stop bouncing. Sorry about that. Again, we're using Alumilite Clear Slow Set. Zero your cup out. Looking for 100. Oh, wow. Literally on the dot, 100. 100. 0 0.0 grams. <laughs> so that was neat. It's the little things. So I've zeroed it out. Make sure that you've sometimes, sometimes I, I find this is just kind of a little warning. Sometimes give it a second because sometimes you push the button and that the force that you applied on the, the scale kind of throws it off. And so it can actually kind of come back on you a few points of a gram, a few tenths of a gram. So just make sure it's zero. Give it a second to make sure it's at zero. Then, uh, we're going to add our part B. And for the part B, we're going 101 grams. Like I was saying before, I like to add a little extra part B to the mixture. Uh, it just tends to work out and it's not going to affect anything, you know, with our, with our ratio or anything. It's not going to alter the, the physical characteristics of the blank in any way. Just gives you, you know, an absolute, You'll be guaranteed, unless you get some sort of moisture contamination or some other thing going on, but it's not going to cause any issues. Make sure that you're not part A heavy for some reason. Now, one thing I need to do before I begin. Um, so I'm going to get a little cup for each one of these little guys. Uh, we got five different little additives that we're doing here. So I'm going to mix this up. Now, if you're doing really complicated blanks and you got a lot of things that you got to fill and, and, and you know, uh, add powders to and adjust, um, you know, that's where slow setting resins really shine. You know, sometimes it, it would be nice to have 45 minutes of working time. And when I do need something like that, that's when I pull out the liquid diamonds. Um, that's the one that I generally like the best. In general, I, they all kind of work the same, the epoxies that are slower setting. So, you know, it doesn't really matter which one you use. But um, when I need time, that's I'll pull out a different resin so that I have that time. Okay, so we got this mixed up. I'm going to hit my clock so that I know how much time we're dealing with. And all I'm going to do here is add about 10 grams, if that, like 5 to 10 You don't need a lot for what I'm trying to do with these little streaks of color. Um, tiny amount works fine, especially in like a pen blank, something small. So can you guys see, I mean, it's a really tiny amount in that cup, you know, so we'll just kind of add an even amount in each one. Whoa, I went way over on that one. I'm going to dump some out. I got a little excited. Sometimes that happens. There we go. That's good. Oh. Got a little excited on that one too. Jeez. I need to just chill out. So what's everybody doing this weekend? Anybody doing anything fun, different, cool? Any projects lined up? Any castings you're going to make? Uh, I got to make some... Uh, I just did a lot of stabilizing, so I got. It's time for me to make some uh, short run blocks for my website, hybrid blocks. All right, so this is what's going to be the bulk of the, our 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 resin, the the blanks, just clear. But for these guys, we're going to add a little bit of fluorescent to this guy. Uh, a fluorescent pink, a little fluorescent green to this guy. Um, and realistically, I should have probably kind of measured that, but whatever. You don't want to go over 5%. 
uh, factored against half of the resin, which means like two and a half percent of the total, but I think we'll be fine. So we got our fluorescent pink ready to rock and you want to mix it in. Uh, this stuff, the way it works, you want it mixed into the resin. Um, I don't advise just dripping some dye straight into your, uh, into the clear resin because it's not going to cure uh, at that point. And it can be messy. If it hasn't cured and cross-linked into the resin, it's going to, you know, like if you cut into it, it's going to create, it's just going to be like a, you're going to get sprayed in the face with dye, basically, because it hasn't cured. So make sure that you mix it in. That's why I'm doing this, mixing a little bit into a small amount. Now for the pewter, that should probably be more than enough. I probably can go actually a little less. So just about, you know, one of these small uh, sticks amount small scoop with a small stick Lou set up your pressure pot today nice uh, make sure uh, to check out if you have any leaks or anything like that check out my video on finding and it's called finding and fixing leaks in a pressure pot or something like that uh, you can just search on my channel but it has some helpful stuff uh, on how to fix that if you experience any leaks which uh, and don't feel bad uh, you know most of the pots that I've set up have some sort of a leak somewhere so it's it just it happens you got to kind of just you know do your best so that is like inter I don't know which one interference red or green one of the two we'll find out in a sec here it looks like the red nope I don't know yeah that's the red so interference colors, when you add quite a bit, it just turns kind of milky white, and that's fine. It'll look fine uh, in the blank, though. It's not going to be that milkiness. Um, the way interference colors work is they kind of need a background, and then it's going to you know, reflect back that color rather than just the white. So it's kind of a weird weird kind of powder thing, but trust me, it'll look good in the, in the end. And we got interference green here. I'll add a little bit of this powder here. Doesn't take that much. Just a little scoop, the little stick. Nice. Oh, good. So is it? It's holding pressure and everything's good to go. You're all set up. I mean, that's like the hardest part, honestly. <laughs> like the most work to get into resin casting. Uh, but I'm glad you got one. I, I really think you know. A lot of people say, "Oh, how can I? You know, what's the cheapest way to resin cast?" And people say, "Don't get a pressure pot." But I really think that it's just better to be set up with one because there's so many things that you can't do if you don't have a pressure pot um, or it's you know you're pretty much guaranteed to have air bubbles in them okay so at this point like now we're just waiting the clock's at five minutes 501 right there um alumilite clear slow set has a, about a 12 minute working time now it's a little bit warm in the shop but it's still only 76 right now so it's pretty cool actually Another way that you can kind of see how far your resin has come, <laughs> uh, because a lot of this stuff, the working time depends on the temperature and the amount, the volume of resin that you have and, and all kinds of different things. A great way to go is to get one of these um, infrared thermometer guns. And I just picked this up at Harbor Freight. It was cheap. Um, and you can kind of test and see, you know, what's the temperature. So this one, this bigger cup is at about 96 degrees right now. I find, uh, and I don't know, I think everybody's kind of got their own little numbers. You can do your own experimentation. And again, this just this is only for Alumilite Clear, and I would even just say slow set. I don't even know if this exactly um, corresponds to their regular set version. Um, but I usually find that when it's going to get to about like 105, like I need to get the thing poured at 105. Um, I don't really want to be messing around too much longer than that. So really, for this, I'm probably going to start pouring this in the, the mold. It's at 98. Probably start pouring it at 100. That way I got some time to work with it. Um, and that number also corresponds to when we were talking about the, the color swirl thing. You know, the, that temperature, when it starts to kind of thicken up in the cup and, and heat up, that's when, you, you know, you're ready to pour. So let's get this camera sitting here. So what I'm going to do... First, I'm going to actually blow this out. There's some stuff in the bottom of this mold. Sorry if that was loud. <clears throat> okay, so we got clean mold now. Wish we had a little bit more light. Sorry about that. That's the best I can do, though, right now. 
And I'm going to pour about, you know, half or so. Now, well, pretty much all of it, but it's about, I'd say like three quarters is what I'm going to pour. Now we're going to be pushing some objects down in here. So you don't want to fill it to the brim, um, but you want to fill it pretty, pretty well. And then we're just going to kind of shove some of these little walnuts. So we got a couple different ones. These are just slices of walnuts. All right. So we can just kind of push them down in. Now, before I do that though, this is where the fun magic and I probably even, this is too much resin, honestly, uh, for each one of these cups. You don't need that much. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take a little bit. We're going to kind of drip it around on the, on the surface. Okay. Hopefully this is getting this. Let me, let me turn this light down there. Now you can kind of, you should be able to see. So we're just going to drip a little bit of each one of these colors on the top. Okay. And you can just get all, you know, get crazy with it. Do whatever you want with, with how you're putting it in there. But it's kind of just sitting on the surface right now, right? I'm going to put the red with the, you know, the interference red with that pink. Probably could have waited a little bit longer before I did this because you, you do want to kind of have this stuff you don't want it to sink to the bottom and it kind of did right there we're okay though we'll, we'll be all right it's not a big deal but that's why for these you kind of want it thick now the problem is i haven't made graffiti blanks <laughs> in the summer yet this year so i don't know exactly what my timing is and all that kind of stuff and temperatures uh, now next step is we're going to grab some of these little these little walnut guys we got some ends, we got different types of stuff. Now I'm gonna just kind of shove them down in at random, basically. Uh, the ends are actually kind of nice because it'll put them on an angle. And you can kind of see the red, that, that clear, or the, the colored resins will kind of swirl around in there in between the, in the holes of these, these walnut shells. So that adds some pretty cool effects to it. And you want to make sure on the ends of these guys that you, you don't push these down in this way. You, you know, you need to fill these little holes with, with the resin. So I'm going to take this other little stick and I'm going to kind of swirl around the swirls of color. And that'll just make it kind of, you know, we'll have a bunch of different like color swirls going on, but, but the majority of the blank is still clear. And that's why I love these things. They're just, they're so cool looking. Uh, now, for if you're turning like a kitted pen, you know, you're making a pen kit, then, you know, it's going to be clear you're, you're going to have to deal with the tube and, and that kind of stuff. A lot of times I just use those um, uh, nickel plated tubes. I really love those things. They're the greatest thing ever. And I don't even mess around with painting because if you paint the tube on something like this, it's going to completely alter the look of the blank. Uh, but the nickel plated tubes they kind of take care of most of the problems that you have. Uh, the only thing that you're going to have is some glue splotches that you'll see. That's kind of the drawback, but I'd rather take a, you know, a glue, glue splotch or two over um, having to paint the tube because it's going to completely alter everything. So we got that done. I have a little flat thing in that, that pressure pot, a, a, a disc of wood. Uh, you want to make sure that if you, you're using a silicone mold that you have something flat, otherwise, it will conform to the shape of the bottom of your pressure pot. So let's move the camera up so you can kind of see what I'm doing over here. The problem is with, with casting, and even if I was using a slow setting resin, you kind of, you know, everything happens <laughs> at the end a lot. Like you, you got to move fast regardless of, am I using a slow setting or a fast setting resin in a lot of cases, you know, like this. You got to kind of wait for that, that perfect time to pour and then, uh, and then move quick. So as you can see, I didn't use, and, and this is going up to 70 PSI. Uh, these pots are rated to 80 and I just go to 70 in them. Now I have a lot of resin left over and frankly, I didn't, one thing I didn't look at is I probably could have topped off each one of those. They may be kind of thin blanks, but I wasn't really thinking I was talking too much. 
And so I still have a lot of resin left in these. So that, that kind of sucks, but that's okay. I just don't want to mess with it right now. I want to move on to the other walnut blanks. <clears throat> and that stuff was pretty much at it, the end of its working time. So let's stop real quick and see what's happening. Hey, how's it going? Mom knows what's happening. Am I making funny noises? What's happening here? Oh, OJ's here. And he super chatted. Thank you so much, OJ. I'm glad you can make it, man. Good to see you, brother. I'm going to move to this camera view since I'm just kind of checking this stuff out. Uh, let's see here. Mike McEwen's here. And Danny, how's it going? Robert had to go. Have a good one, man. Oh, Jamie Page, too. Wait, what's going on here? I missed that. Sorry, Jamie. Towards a new stabilizing chamber. <laughs> Thanks, man. I appreciate it. That's hilarious. Yeah, so if you didn't see my, my social media posts, I, I, I had an accident uh, with my 8-inch Turntex chamber. Uh, and for anybody that doesn't know what happened, I, I was saying that it was too hot in the shop. The truth is, it doesn't get 80, above 85 in my shop usually, um, unless it's like 105 outside which it wasn't. So the problem was I leave my stabilizing stuff up by the overhead door in our shop up in the front so that sometimes like if I'm shooting video and I have a, a stabilizing a vacuum chamber pump, uh, a vacuum pump running, it'll be in the, the video. So I, I put it under the door, you know, so that's, that's why I have it up there. So I just leave that stuff. That's where I do uh, vacuum. And then when, it, when it's time to soak, I just leave them in the chamber up there. Problem was that day was pretty warm and I wasn't in the shop that day and my dad had to load his car onto a trailer which means he left the overhead door open for like I don't know an hour or two probably at like 1 p.m. So <laughs> and you know to be honest it wasn't his fault like I don't even know if I would have if it would have dawned on me that that was sitting there now technically if I was in the shop I I should have been probably getting that out of the chamber and baking that day but what ended up happening was, uh, for anybody that doesn't know, cactus juice, when you're stabilizing it, it can cure, start to cure at above 85 degrees Fahrenheit. So <laughs> I got a eight inch, my, my eight inch chamber uh, was full of hardened cactus juice when I came in on Saturday morning and ruined the, the thing. And a lot of you guys saw, I took a picture and it was all cracked and broken. That It didn't explode or melt or anything like that. It just, that the cactus juice hardened in place in an eight inch PVC pipe, basically. And I was trying to tap it to get it to maybe unstick <laughs> from the sides. And I, you just, I had to keep beating it harder and harder. And it finally just cracked the pipe. And, I, and then I just had to, you know, crack it. And, you know, it was ruined at that point. So that's the story. And uh, thank you, Jamie, for, for the, the, the super chat towards my new chamber. Yeah, I got to get a new one because I got more stabilizing to do. But... These things happen sometimes. So it's just a warning. And I wanted to make sure I, I posted on social media. If you're going to be stabilizing and, you know, now it's summer, a lot of us, you know, are doing this stuff in, in unair conditioned uh, shops that get pretty hot during the day. Make sure you do not store cactus juice that has already been, you know, uh, catalyzed. Uh, it's you know ready to go. Uh, don't store it in temperatures above 85 degrees or it can just cure in the bottle. So, and don't let it keep soaking in, in hot temperatures, that stuff. So, uh, go fund me. Yeah, no, I, it's fine. I can afford it. It just, it, it was just, like I said, one of those things. It's, it was an unfortunate, it was an unfortunate series of events. I wasn't here. My dad, it's not like my dad has the door open ever, you know, that long. And it's not, I don't even stabilize that often. So just a lot of things all crashed together at once, unfortunately. All right, so next one, let's do some solid colors with these. Uh, I showed you that, um, the, uh, here we go. Showed you the, this example. This one's pretty much a solid. We got some uh, mica powders in there and, and it, it's really cool because you basically are just getting these cross sections of the, the walnut shells. Now the ones we just did, you're gonna be able to see the whole thing, you know? But this, you just get these really cool patterns. So let's do that. And let's see here. Since we got two super chats, I'm going to let Jamie and OJ pick the colors. 
Uh, we'll do two colors, uh, one of each for you guys. So you guys pick the colors that you want and we're gonna throw some, uh, again, same, same thing. We're gonna do two, two blanks. One of these guys, oh, sorry guys, wrong camera. We got uh, another one of these. We'll do two pin blanks with this. And you guys get to pick some colors. So tell me what you wanna see. Let's see here. What else has happened? I was like, yeah, it was a perfect storm. <laughs> That's right. Oh, yeah. Lemony, yeah, lemony snickets. So, you know what the funniest part was? I'm so the way this works. So, for anybody that doesn't know, um, I don't have my chambers right here, but just assume this is a six inch PVC pipe, all right? So the way that the, the Turntex chambers are, they're clear PVC. And actually let, let's make it one step closer to, a, <laughs> to what these things look like. They have a glued on bottom. And then, you know, for the vacuum chamber, you use a, a lid that's sealed. But when you're done, uh, you know, you've done the vacuum stage and everything, and then you're, you're gonna be putting it in the oven. The way the Turntex chambers work, there's a little thing that, that holds everything in the pipe. And so you just dump out the excess juice, you can reuse it. And so the funniest part was, it's a clear PVC pipe, guys. Eight inch, and I'm dumping the, the liquid out and not much comes out. And I'm thinking, wow, the wood really absorbed a lot of juice. There's not much left. <laughs> and then I look down in the bottom and there's a three inch brick of cactus juice hardened. And I went, ah, oh, I know what happened. <laughs> so I'm an idiot. Uh, Bradley, what's up, man? Antique gold. And, oh, well, you got to pick one, Jamie. Blue or silver? I think blue and antique gold would be a pretty good one. I like that idea. I don't know if I've actually made a blue and antique. So I'm going to be using some Caster's Choice powders for these. Good old Brian Blum over at Caster's Choice has provided us with every color and flavor of Caster's Choice Mica powders. So I got, let's see here. You know what I haven't used is sky blue. I haven't used that for a long time. So I think we're gonna go with that and then antique gold. Antique gold from Caster's Choice is one of my favorites, actually. It's a really good, really good color. Um, I'll switch to this view over here. Okay, so blue, we'll switch to this camera view. So I'm gonna go with their sky blue. And it's just, you know, it's like your standard blue. Um, a lot of times I go for, you know, they have, they, have a, they have a bunch of blues. They have cobalt and brilliant are the two that I usually use. Brilliant is kind of more that turquoise color and then cobalt's kind of darker. So that's just kind of to give you an idea. They also have one called paradise blue and it's, I don't know, it's lighter. Who knows, there's too many blues. We're gonna go with sky blue. I think that's a good one. And then their antique gold. It just has that deep, it's kind of that like orangey gold. It's a really rich color. So I think these two, you know, blue and, and this antique gold are gonna be really rich looking blanks and it's gonna go really well with that walnut, uh, the brown. So good choices, guys. Let's see, hey, thanks, yeah. Thumbs up. I love the thumbs ups. All right, so let's switch to the casting view. Um, and again, I'm going to make notes. I always make notes. So um, I think I did the wrong pen, though. That's okay. I like using, I have this uh, a digital pen, and I like using that because if anything were to happen to my physical notebook, like, I don't know, if there was a flood, a fire, whatever, you know, it's always staying in the shop and, you know, things happen. Uh, like, uh, I like having this digital pen because it saves it to the cloud and I kind of forgot to do that on the first round. So, oops, I'll be all right though. I'll pull out this little piece of cardboard so I don't get my, my book all resiny. So number two is gonna be, let's see here. Uh, we're calling this opaque and we're doing, uh, oh, another thing that I forgot to do. So I, I put what resin I was using in my notes. I also use, uh, explain what, what mold. So we're doing the two blank 
P-Town, is what I'll call it. That's P-Town Subby, Fred, Fred Wisson makes those silicone blanks. So again, we're gonna do the two blank, P-Town. We're using slow set clear again. And actually this time, because I Illumilite sent me some free regular set, uh, we're just gonna use the regular. It'll be fine. I don't really have a lot of setup to do. It's just two different cups of, you know, two colors. So we're gonna do regular set. And that stuff sets up in about five to seven minutes. Uh, kind of depends on, again, the temperature and everything, but I would guess we'll be probably ready to pour it in about five. So we're going to do, I'm just, I think a hundred grams is probably too much for these, but we're just going to estimate a hundred per tube or per blank. So 200 grams total, that's a hundred times two. Now in this case, it's totally opaque. So I'm not going to mess around adding one, an extra gram of part B because it's not going to show up. That's only if I'm doing dead clear with it. I'm not, you know, there's going to be totally clear parts of the blank. So just, just to let you know, that's kind of a weird, odd thing, but it, if you do that for the clear ones, uh, you, you'll probably get better results adding that extra little part B. Uh, so we're doing, let's see here, 100 grams in each one of those, for each color, we can just do a 50-50. And we're doing sky blue, caster's choice, and we're doing, I gotta learn how to write, antique gold caster's choice uh, and you guys can pick up if you if you guys want to try these out if you haven't tried caster's choice they're pretty good uh it's a, it's a good product now there's not a lot of difference between you know any of them uh but they are a little bit finer powder i i, I like them honestly they're a little I mean, minor differences but they got really good colors and uh brian blum uh set this whole company up so it's a good way to you know if i have to to choose where i want to send my money <laughs> i'm going to give it to brian over you know perlex personally so um brian you can get these guys at, at turnerswarehouse.com uh chad sells you know he's the distributor for them uh and over in the uk house of resin has this stuff too so uh now so how much are we going to add and i just did a thing about mica powders uh we're going for opaque so we're going to add a lot i'm going to put half a teaspoon and that's one thing I didn't mention in that video, but I didn't really want to say, well, you should add this much because it really depends on what powder and what brand and all that kind of stuff and how much resin. Um, but in this case, we're doing 100 grams total. Uh, if we add a half teaspoon of these two colors, they're going to be pretty much opaque. So uh, we're good to go. Uh, a quarter teaspoon would probably be enough in this case, but we're just going to, we want dark. We want, I mean, opaque. So we're going to have it. All right. So now that I've, yeah, the pens are not cheap. That, that is, that is true, but this is my business. And so a hundred dollar pen is really, you know, <laughs> we're all pen makers. We sell a hundred dollar pen, no problem. Right. But this is a digital one that I think it was like, I don't know how much it was a hundred, something like that, 150, but it saves the data like all of the recipes that I, that I have for my blanks, it saves them in the cloud. So it's totally worth it. Totally worth it. Let's see here. Uh, so yeah, if you never heard of a digital pen, it just, it, it like records and digitizes what you're writing. This one's a Neo smart pen, N-E-O. Anybody that cares, you know. Um, if you're like, here's the thing about it. If I was a college, why isn't this thing focusing? It's not focusing. I'm going to switch camera views. If I was a college student again, I would totally own one of these. I mean, it is awesome. You can even like queue up like with your iPad, you could record voice memos. And then like some of these things have the technology where you like, just leave a note. Oh, I didn't put it on the right one. <laughs> I don't think, I don't know if I did or not. Here, here's the name of it, Neo Smart Pen. There's other ones too. Um, I chose this one for my use. I actually probably, if I was a college student for notes and all that stuff, I would probably would have gone with the other brand. There's, a, there's an, another bigger brand out there. But um, it's pretty cool. It's interesting technology. So I got everything backed up. I won't lose my, my, my uh, recipes and things. Okay, so now with all that said, Smart Pens. Let's, uh, oh, it's shaking and wiggling. Zero it out. 
And we're going to get aluminum. Oh, no, we're doing regular set this time. What was I thinking? So we went and saw Dark Phoenix last night. It was awesome. I really like that movie. It was a good one. Zero it out. Just double check. Okay. Yeah, we had, we had a good time. It wasn't actually last night. It was yesterday day. Uh, pretty good movie, though. I liked it. I enjoyed it. So we're sneaking up on 100 grams of part A here. Sneaking up. Just, oh, I went a little over. So it's 101. We're going to go with 101 grams instead. It'll be fine. Uh, 101 grams of each one of these. Did I zero that out? I did. So I think the next movie that I'm excited to see is Spider-Man. If you didn't know already, I like the Marvel movies. They're awesome. Uh, oh, and we saw a preview for Star Wars. That's going to be sweet. That's not coming out till de December, though. Uh, there we go, 101. All right, so, and there's different ways you can do this, depending on the resin you're using, the time you have with it, all that kind of stuff. Uh, some resins, if they're super fast, like there are some resins that literally you have two minutes of working time. In that case, you know, you may not want to just mix it all in one cup. Uh, it, it may be easier to do, you know, smaller amounts, uh, different, you know, like mix 100 grams total uh, for your sky blue. And, and so there's different ways depending on how much time you have. Now we have enough time. I mean, five to seven minutes is more than enough time. I'm just going to mix this in this cup all at once. It's not that much volume either total. So mix it all in one cup and then uh, dump off 100 grams into another one when we're ready to rock. Let's see if I can see what's happening here. Oh, I'm, I'm behind on the chat. Um, I can't really demo. You can just, just uh, Google or, you know, on YouTube, go and, and look for Neo Smart Pen, and it'll explain everything better than I can even explain it. But it basically has like a camera in there, I think, and it just records what you write. But it has to, the, th the problem is you have to use certain notebooks with these pens. They don't, you can't just write in a Mead Trapper Keeper <laughs> you know, thing any old piece of paper you have to write in specific notebooks so i mean it's expensive i'm not gonna lie but you know there are some people out there that it is a fabulous way to 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 do that if you need stuff digitized and there's even other types of technologies out there um, where you don't have to have like this expensive pen but you you know like the thing you're writing on it's like a, a backer board thing it'll digitize it automatically for you. So there's like different ways of doing stuff. This just seemed like the best way to go for me. Cause I figured you gotta buy the notebooks anyway. You know, if you're writing stuff down and I, you know, I was already using, you know, three ring notebook things. So what's, what's the difference really? Get that up to a hundred, close enough. And then I actually use, uh, you know, your tablespoon measurement things, uh, spoons. So like I said, uh, now you can add some dye to this if you wanted. I'm just going to go for straight powder. Um, that's also another thing that I didn't really mention in that video. Uh, you know, if you're using, and this is a quarter teaspoon, so I'm going to do, we want a half teaspoon. What I mentioned in my video, though, on, on mica powders is, you know, if you mix it in there, and, and this is especially for thinner things like pen blanks and all that. Um, if you pull it out and you can totally see the wood grain of your popsicle stick, then it's not, you don't have enough mica powder in there. Now it's actually a quarter teaspoon would have probably been enough, but we're going to go for super. No question. It's opaque. So this half teaspoon in a hundred total grams, I mean, that's in, for the most part with most mica powders, it is going to be pretty much guaranteed 
to be opaque in the pen blank after you've drilled it and turned it. You won't see tubes in, for, for most of them. Yeah, that is, I mean, that is dead opaque. You, can, you can't see any, anything in there. I don't know if you guys can see that, but no question. If you can't see the popsicle stick, you're not going to see the tube uh, for pen blanks. For bigger blanks, like stoppers and stuff, generally whatever it looks like in the cup as, as kind of a larger mass, that's, that's good. That'll be what it's going to be in the end. So now, oh, look at that. That antique gold is just, that's a rich color. I like it. Quarter. Good choice, OJ. I'm glad you're not having to work today. Do you have the day off? Is your ch schedule changing? Whiskey Echo, we're working on walnut. We're casting walnut shells today. So we're having fun. Now I can already, it's three, we're three minutes into this. I got my clock here, three minutes. And it's already warming up in my hand. You know, I can, I can tell this stuff's heating up. I'm going to pull the little thermostat thing out. But again, I think that probably somewhere in the 100 to 105 range is probably good, a good time to pour colors together, uh, you know, so that they don't bleed. Um, you can also look at like the thickness of the resin, how it kind of comes off the popsicle stick. And I, and I really, even if you, I, I, I suggest not relying on temperature gauges or time or whatever alone. Wow, this is already at 110. So I think we need to get going here. I think we need to get going. I was messing around there, guys. So. Uh, and I'm gonna just pour these together first. Pour, you know, pour the colors first and then we're gonna push down our little walnut things. So, and I probably should have blown that out, but this resin is really warming up here. I never poured like this before. Oh, that's probably good. And then this one, we're gonna do half and half. I always love doing this. Oh, that's probably way too much. I screwed that up. Forgot we were adding the walnut shells. I'm gonna try and suck a little bit out. I probably shouldn't have used the gold, uh, the gold popsicle stick to pull out the blue resin. My bad. I'm in a rush. I'm in a rush, guys. Yeah, I think we're gonna we're gonna get three sets of these guys. So we'll just push these guys down in, and I don't. You don't want them to end up flat. I want to try and get these things to kind of stay, and that's one really good thing about these silicone molds is uh, it'll kind of let things, you, you know, you can kind of wedge things in and they'll stay in place. Well, we're getting a little bit too, too much. That's too much. I really like these ends. I think those are really awesome for, for pen blanks. I'm going to try and kind of load this up a little bit here. see how that does let's just see how that does it looks like we might have enough for like one more one more pen blank so like I said though you want to make sure that you're putting this on something flat if you're using a silicone mold so uh, that's where these little tray things caddies come in uh, you want to make sure that the the silicone mold sitting on something hard and flat when you put it in the pressure pot, because even even CA Technologies pots, uh, which are don't have that giant dished out bottom, like your Harbor Freights and most of them, you know, they're they're like really dished out on the bottom. Uh, it's pretty flat, but it's still not dead flat. And for the longest time, I would be getting banana shaped <laughs> blanks, and I had no clue what was doing it until I realized you're pressurizing it. It's gonna you know make that silicone mold conform to whatever's underneath it and that's what was doing at the bottom of the pressure pot so 70 psi Whew. 
Had to kind of work a little bit fast there at the end. Sorry about that. Resin casting can be hectic sometimes, guys. Uh, that's one reason, you know, the more that you can do to prepare for a casting and get all everything set up and ready to rock, uh, the better off you are. Now, I, those, those molds definitely don't, a hundred grams is, is way too much for those P-Town subby pen blanks. So I would say probably 75, 80 next time is what I would use. And that's still probably going to be a little bit more than you need. I could do the math. I just, I'm lazy. All right, so let's stop real quick and see. Uh, see what's happening. Power back on. What's going on? I got to stop here. Hold on a minute. What's happening? OJ. Day off. Storm damage. Oh, I didn't know it was. I, I, I got to be honest. I don't really watch the news and stuff. <laughs> Sorry to hear that, man. That sucks. Not much shop time. That's no fun. You got to get a break, man. Take a break. Are you going to SWAT? Unfortunately, I'm not probably going to SWAT this year. I, we'll see. I, I want to get out there, but I, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to make it this year. Uh, but hopefully, uh, hopefully you'll be able to. Nice. Yeah, that sucks, man. Sorry to hear that. I didn't know. I kind of, we've been kind of busy with like, I don't know, doing random stuff lately too. So I haven't been seeing what, what's been going on in other parts of the country. Uh, what kind of storms have been happening? I, fill me in on what's going on. John, yes, I am actually next, this weekend. Uh, I was, I've been meaning to uh, shoot you an email because I have results. So, and I just figured I, I didn't, I haven't actually gotten on your blanks. I just figured I'd wait so you can see what I've done. Uh, so that just before I start pouring stuff for, <laughs> for yours, we're on the same page. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to SWAT this year, Bradley. This year's just killing me on, on trips. Uh, we have to, not have to, uh, but my 10 year anniversary, um, you know, Gretchen and I, uh, is in August and we're going to Hawaii, like in the middle of Hawaii, uh, middle of August. So I don't think that I'm going to be able to make it out to Texas at the end of the month also. So it's no fun, no fun at all. Uh, that one's still tentative. I'm not going to be able to make it to AEW and, and AWFS this year either, but um, SWAT, I really, I'm bummed that I can't make it to that one because I love SWAT. That's, that, that's, you know, out of the turning symposiums, that is by far my favorite event. Um, so I'm, I'm tentatively saying no right now. Um, I need to kind of look into it and just see how much is it going to cost before I, get, before I <laughs> say absolutely no. Uh, what am I using to clean off the mica? I, to be honest, it's wasteful, but it's denatured alcohol. I just, I have these things up here to clean up resin um, and it, and it works. Now, you know, you can just wipe it off with a mica powder. Most of them just, you know, you can wipe it off or do whatever. Uh, water would work fine. I just have denatured alcohol in these jugs and I'm, that's what I use. It's kind of an expensive way to clean it though. I have resin on my hands. Okay, so we have one, I think we can get one more blank. Um, and actually, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna do one more, and we're not gonna do a pen blank. We're gonna do a stopper blank. How about that? I've been showing you that, that stopper, <laughs> and uh, so I, th I think it's just fair that we make a stopper blank. That was one of the the thing. So what I'm going to do, I got a one and a half inch PVC pipe here. All right. And we're going to pull out our P-Town subby. Fred makes all the best stuff. I'm telling you. Um, I really like his rack. This thing, nice rack. <laughs> it just works perfect. It's modular. You can, you know, take out and move shelves and do all this stuff. And it's just a really fabulous uh, uh, setup. Uh, now for, if you're doing, you know, like stopper blanks or or larger you know some a lot of times when i'm doing like the three inch or four inch pvc pipes depending on how tall it is 
um, it's easy to just hot glue the thing to these shelves and then stick it on your rack and you're good to go. So uh, you can, they make the silicone plug things for these. I find that they tend to come out uh, fairly easy, so don't use those. Um, I've used tape, like packing tape in the past. That's okay, but it, it can leak. I find the best way to go is just hot glue it down to something. Um, one thing that, I, this is an area where I would actually rather, what I want to make, and, and uh, Fred actually makes a uh, something like this. It's just, I don't like the sizes that he, he sells. Let me, let me look this up. Turner's Warehouse. Uh, Fred makes a stopper size silicone thing, and it's got four uh, holes in it, but they're like 11 sevenths. It's like a weird 13 sixteenths or some, I don't know. It's not like an inch and a half or whatever, you know. I want an inch and a half, uh, maybe even two inches. So I want to make that sometime, but I'm going to go stopper, mold. Yeah, so four bottle stopper mold and they are one in 13 30 seconds diameter now i don't get why you would do that it's pretty close to one and a half but i i really want one and a half or larger actually so i'm going to probably make my own uh, but silicone is an even easier way to go they just then they'll just pop right out so let's get the camera set up i'll show you how i do this i just use hot glue and hot glue it down to the let me get my camera set up right show you what's happening here so you can see what's going on 105 Ugh. who's that where are you at joel yeah i bet it's hot in texas you're in houston especially Ugh. alcohol dyes turn white and bubbly hmm uh, some of them do but i know that um uh, Heath Knuckles uses an alcohol stuff, dyes, and his don't turn bubbly. I think that if you're adding wood to it as well, it's probably moisture from the wood coming out, not the alcohol dyes. Oh, hold on, guys. <laughs> Stupid camera. Okay, so I got to go get my hot glue gun, and we'll be ready to go. I just, this hot glue method works really well it's easy easy to do it's pretty quick uh, now first thing i need to do though is i need to spray my little pvc pipe with stoner because we do not want our things sticking to it so sprayed that good uh, what what i like to do is kind of wipe off the bottom edge that i'm going to be gluing down uh, just wipe it off with some acetone to kind of clean off any extra excess uh, stoner so we get a good so that glue gets a good bond on the bottom not any fuzzies in there and so I'm, my glue gun's heating up right now gotta give that a second and we'll be good to go pvc from there um all i do is just kind of pry it off a lot of times you can just like literally pop it off of there uh, by hand um, but otherwise i have a little scraper tool that I just kind of wedge under the, the glue. Let me show you that. You can use anything really, but uh, just kind of stick some sort of a wedge type thing, a little scraper thing under, you know, just kind of scrape it off of there, get the glue off and it pops right out. And you know, the HDPE, the, the resin is not going to stick to that. So uh, the only thing you need to do is get the glue off. Uh, another thing you can do is you could, you know, remelt with a heat gun. You could, uh, heat up the glue if you wanted. I find it's easier just to kind of pop it off of there though. Not very tough. Okay, so let's see here. Hmm. Yeah, it usually just kind of pops off. Hey, how's it going, Richard? That's uh, no problem. You can always go back and watch these. Um, usually the way that, for, for anybody that doesn't know, um, it usually just puts these things unlisted. It's not like it's unavailable, private, or whatever um, after the, the show. So usually they're, they're kind of available if you can find the right link to it, but um, 
but you know within a couple days i get everything ready so that it's the replays up i've got i, I feel bad for some people because they don't realize you know what's kind of going on with my channel and the you know like these replays and these people put comments like your videos are extremely long <laughs> and i'm like well it's a live stream sorry the normal ones are not uh, but i just looking at this I, and i would change things up if if i wasn't getting you know it, it seems obvious that there's a lot of people that go back and watch these so I'm not changing anything. We have some fun. I think it's fun to hang out on Fridays with you guys and hopefully you guys have fun. That's the whole point. And hopefully you get lots, you know, as, well, as much as you can out of it. So that's pretty good. Um, you know, I like to, you know, more is better in general. In fact, I'm, I'm just gonna top it off here. There's a couple, couple areas that, you know, you don't want it to leak. That, I mean, hot glue is a lot cheaper than resin. And, you know, at this point now I'm out of walnut shells so if this leaks and it ruins the blank then i'm kind of hosed right so no harm in just gluing the heck out of this thing and making sure there's no leaks now i got i, I mean it ain't gonna leak guys realistically i would have been probably fine on that first one but so we got that and you need to wait you know you got to wait a few minutes for that hot glue to get ready to rock set up and everything but so i'm just going to set it over here and and let it sit now we got to figure out what are we going to do for the colors on this one that's the real question <clears throat> excuse me i need a drink Ooh, it is dry it's very dry gotta go mow oh man that's no fun is, is it a snap-on tool no it's not I don't think it, it's not Snap-on brand. It was cheap. I got it at like Harbor Freight or Craftsman maybe. Might be a Craftsman. Uh, it doesn't say. It's not Snap-on though. Snap-on's expensive. I only spend a lot of money on tools when I need to and that's not one that I need to spend a lot of money on. <clears throat> Uh, what time did the live stream start? Friday at 3 p.m. Pacific time. And uh, one other thing that I want to mention, uh, I know there's a few of you guys are patrons uh, over on Patreon. Um, I'm thinking about, uh, and if you are a patron, um, I, uh, I've, I've sent messages out, but I'm going to send out a, a, like a little survey. I was thinking about doing like a monthly Q&A uh, for patrons. Uh, so if you are a patron, let me know what you think about that. I think that'd be kind of cool. Because I kind of come up with fun stuff and just talk while I'm doing stuff. But if people have very specific questions, <clears throat> I think that that would be a really good way to uh, give, you know, another little benefit perk to the folks that support the channel over there on Patreon. <laughs> You're off for an hour, uh, one hour. All right, Bradley, have a good one, man. I'll probably swing by on Monday. That's not the other one that you were talking about, the, the one year anniversary, is it? That's just a different thing. Let me know if, if you're still here. <laughs> Bradley's having a, a live stream on Monday morning at I believe it's 11 a.m. Uh, Eastern time. And it looked pretty cool, so I'm gonna check in on that. Okay, so I don't think I'm missing anything. All right, so we need to... Um, Oh, good. Thanks, Christine. I'm glad you glad you enjoyed it. Yeah, midnight. Uh, oh, where, where are you over in the UK, Don? I didn't realize that. Yeah, it might not be a bad idea to to uh, switch the schedule of the, the stream. I know there's a lot of people across the pond that watch, and I feel bad. It is. It's like at midnight, goes to like two or something in the morning, and sometimes. Maybe we'll have to do, like, some days it's a little earlier, some days it's kind of afternoon. Okay, so let's focus now. So we're making a bottle stopper, uh, and we're going to add walnuts, obviously. So if anybody's just joining the fun, we got these walnut shells. You probably saw the picture, but walnut shells. I need to get some more of these. So we're going to just kind of shove all these guys down in there. I kind of like... Uh, I like both ways. Now, I have an example blank 
this one's going to be totally opaque. So you get the, that sheared, you know, slices effect and you get the really cool patterns uh, that come because of the, the, the interesting shapes. The other way to go is we can go kind of transparent where you can actually see the entire walnut shell. Um, you know, so I don't know which way to go on this and I have no good way to, <laughs> so why don't you guys just, what do you guys want to see? Do you, do you, would you rather see that kind of opaque with the, the, you know, slices where you see that kind of, you know, just the, the patterns, or do you want to see some transparency in this? We can maybe do like a twilight blank. That actually would be pretty sweet. Uh, where I use the color shift powder and a little bit of the, the glitter. That would be pretty awesome. Um, it would be transparent enough to where, you know, you, you could see the walnut shells, but that, that color shift powder would, would do some really cool effects uh, when, it, when you see it through, you know, with the walnut behind it. That would be pretty sweet. I gotta be honest. That's a good idea, I think. Let me know what you guys think. <clears throat> UK. Oh. Trans I got one transparent. Twilight, I think, would be kind of fun. I mean, if, if you guys like the twilight idea, say twilight <laughs> or, or whatever, Zach, just do it. <laughs> oh, John wants opaque. Transparent with color shift. Julie likes it. All right. I think yeah, we got, unless we get like a overwhelming amount of people seeing opaque. Hunter green is pretty cool. That's, that's not a bad idea. That would go good with that, that brown, I think. We love bling. Okay, we're gonna do it. Christina said it. Uh, we gotta go with it. We're gonna do the, I, and this is just, I, I like to name blanks that way I, you know, obviously for like selling them purposes and stuff. But so this is what I call Twilight. And I gotta look up. I'm gonna actually link to a video. I, I kinda, you're gonna see what I'm doing, how I do this stuff, but I also have a video if you wanna uh, watch that also. Uh, some pretty cool looking blanks that I, I put burl with. What do I call it? Aurora effects. Let's see here. Let's see if my video. Oh, there it is. Nebulous Aurora effects. Okay, so here's a video that you can watch. Uh, and it has links to, because I sell the, the color shift powder that I use and the, the glitter stuff. So. There's a link if anybody's interested in watching that video later. Um, but you're going to kind of see what I'm doing here anyway. So number three. So we, we're, we're pulling out our, pulling the, the notebook out of every single time. And I, and I highly recommend if you're doing resin casting, I, I got to be honest, no matter what you're doing, you know, if you're trying to learn something or improve or do whatever, if you have a hobby, uh, it's good to keep a notebook of, of what's going on. So we're going to call this one Twilight. Uh, we're using a, a one and a half inch PVC pipe and we're going to just, I'm going to go with, uh, the slow set, the clear, slow, eh, we're just going to go regular, clear, regular. It's like, it's, it, this one's a really simple, there's not much going on, not a lot of moving parts. So we'll just do the regular set. That's fine. Um, and another reason I like keeping notes is because I don't really have to keep in, in my head, like how much resin do I need to use, you know, for a one and a half inch PVC pipe. I just need to go back to my notes if I can find them. Uh, one of the cool things about that, that pen that I use is you can actually, you know, it's digitized, which means now you can search for, you know, words and stuff, which it's, it's not, Right now is not the time because I have to kind of go through and it's not like immediate right now, but it's a good thing that if I ever need to look for something like from three years ago, I can just go in and kind of search. So let me, usually I don't need to mess with that anyway because I kind of usually do things over and over. So hold on, I'm, I'm looking up my trying to figure out I think that I would say that a hundred grams is probably pretty close on that but I just want to look and make sure and you can do math you can figure out you know how much do you need based on 
measurements. There we go. One and a half inch candy cane, 100 grams. Yeah. So I think actually 80, we only need about 80 grams total for this thing, if that. So I'll just go with 80. We're going to go 40 times two. Um, and then we're going to do twilight blanks, which is, uh, this is a, a blue to purple color shift powder. And I sell this on my website if anybody wants to pick it up. It's actually, uh, there's a few places you can get, you know, I'm not like the only person that sells this, but I think that I have a pretty good price on it. But all I sell is blue to purple. It's the color, it's the one that I like quite a bit. And let's see here. So twilight now. The question is one eighth per hundred. <clears throat> yeah. To get this effect, you really don't want to add a lot of this color shift powder. And I think it was, I think that my, my, and this is why I recommend checking out that video. I think it's about one eighth. It's been a while since I made twilight blanks, but I think the, the mix ratio that I kind of like for pen blanks uh, was like around one eighth teaspoon per 200 grams of resin total. So we really don't need much at all. Uh, I'm just pretty much going to go with a pretty small scoop uh, on, on one of these, these stir sticks for it. So I, I just kind of, I have notation. That's, that's a small scoop for me. Um, and I actually, I call, it's blue to purple color shift. I call it blurple. <laughs> so I just, I know what that is. And then a small scoop of what I call twilight glitter or, or starlight glitter, I should say. Um, and it's just kind of a uh, kind of neat looking glitter that I found uh, that the mixture of these things kind of make it look like, you know, that night sky with, you know, starlight a little bit. And same thing. I just you don't need much of this stuff. Small scoop of the starlight. And that's what I call a twilight blank. That's how I make them. Uh, pretty cool. I, I really like them. They're, they make some pretty cool looking blanks. Um, do I have my pen here? I used to have it. I think I took it home. I had a pen that I made out of it, and it, it's really sweet, but I'm probably going to put that up for sale so I don't have it. Okay, so we just need a small cup here. Let's get this going. <clears throat> Night shift is cool. Nice. I like it. That's pretty sweet. I, I wish some days I like, I like what I do a lot, but it'd be kind of cool if I'd had like, you know, you're, you have kind of this like desk job type thing and night shift. You could watch live streams and cool stuff like that. That'd be fun at work, get paid for it. I technically, I, I'm not technically getting paid for it, but it's technically kind of work when I watch people's live streams and stuff. I could consider it work oriented. All right, so 40 grams of each of these guys. Now this is gonna be on the transparent side. Uh, so I might add a little bit extra part B, but it's not really, you know, we're not, it's not dead clear that we're going for, uh, is it? No, not dead clear, 38. I had to think about that for a second, 40. And let's put this down. Uh, so big thank you to Alumalite for sending me some Alumalite clear regular set for free. I asked them if they had, if they would send me bottles, <laughs> Actually, and I, I meant empty, and they sent me full jugs, because my, my old ones are getting kind of crummy. Uh, <laughs> so can't complain there. So 40 and 40. There we go. <clears throat> All right, so we got 80 grams in here. Let's get this mixed up. Uh, this is the regular set. So we got about five to seven minutes or so, depending on the temperature in your shop. Oh, I spilled some. I just, I thought I saw that. That's not the smartest way to mix. Because the problem with that is we don't know if that was part A or part B or how much of it. It wasn't totally mixed yet. So that's not, you know, it's not good to be sloshing all over the place. So I apologize for being a bad influence on everybody. Bad example. 
Uh, one thing to keep in mind in the summer when it's, you know, hot in the shop, unless you have, you know, climate controlled shop, um, you know, if it's hotter than normal, the, the resin thins out and it actually gets a little, you know, if you're whipping it around, it's thinner and it'll probably do that more often. Just something to keep in mind. Okay, so we got our resin mixed up. I think everything should be fine, even though I sloshed it out of the cup. I'm just going to clean that up so I don't stick anything in it. <clears throat> And like I said, uh, you really don't want a lot of this, this, this color shift powder. Uh, I'm, I'm really not going to go for much. And, I, and I'm going to be a little bit careful. I'm going to go for le even less than I think initially. You want to stay on the, the lower side and then kind of take a look at it. So this is going to be a bottle stopper. So whatever the cup looks like is going to kind of be what we got. Now, this is really not that much. Let me get on the camera here. That's, that's, that's our very small scoop. It's not much powder at all. We're going to start there. We're going to mix it in because it really needs to be fairly transparent. Now, this is like that interference powder. The way it works is it kind of depends on having something in the background to make it reflect the color. But it's going to, depending on how the, the light hits it, it's going to be blue or purple reflected. So that's why, that's how you get that color shift. Now, it's pretty clear, but... There is a little bit of color in there. Now, I'm going to add just a little bit more. Not much, just a little bit, because I want a little bit more effect. But if you add too much, it just becomes milky white, and you're kind of hosed. And even at that, it's going to become a little bit cloudy. You know? I mean, this is not a dead clear blank. It's not going to be... It's going to be a little cloudy, but you should be able to see in the cup some reflecting happening which i can see i don't know if you guys yeah you guys can kind of see that it's just kind of reflecting it's a little cloudy that's exactly what we want and then when we put those walnut shells in there it's going to be awesome now one other thing that i want to mention on this blank before my camera falls off sorry guys <laughs> i was going to lose the camera um one other thing I want to mention about these blanks is what I like to do is you really kind of want to wait. You want to wait for this to, to thicken up. Uh, and even though we're not pouring two colors at one time, we're pouring one in here, but it's full of a bunch of particles. And depending on how they're oriented, you're going to get different effects. So what I do is you're going to wait until it thickens up a bit and it's, and it's not going to move. Those little particles aren't going to move at all on you. Give it a little swirl in the cup and you'll get some different cool effects that way. Uh, if you just pour it right away, let, let's say you're using a 45 minute, you know, epoxy resin and you just dumped it right in there, it's gonna kind of, the particles will, will settle out a little bit and it's not gonna be as, as impressive. So uh, we're at 246 right now. It's already starting to thicken up. Uh, the temperature 77 in my shop right now. So even with the Lumalite Clear regular set, this is why I don't use regular set generally, because it's, you know, five to seven minutes is pretty fast. you got to be moving. That's pretty thick. I'm going to start pouring this already. Now, we're going to go with this Starlight Glitter. Again, we don't want much. You don't need much. I actually should have uh, mixed that in in the cup. You don't need a lot of this stuff. It's just adding a little bit of bling uh, that will kind of add some interest, you know. But you don't need much at all. So we got our starlight glitter. I usually add that to the cup before, when I'm mixing it. I kind of forgot to do that. We're going to add a little bit more of this. You can already see. I mean, it's thick, right, guys? Uh, one of the things about the slow set version of Illumilite Clear is it, it also... Not only does it have a longer working time, but it has a longer gel period, which gives you, oh, I should have not put that in upside down like that. See those bubbles coming out? We want to make sure no air is trapped. We got, let's see, I guess they're all just ends here that we got. So we're just going to kind of load this thing up. With walnut shells. That's looking pretty cool, I think. We got one more, but it's a really big one, and I don't think it's really necessary. I think we want a little bit of some space in between. 
and I'm just going to kind of mix it up a little bit here just to make sure. So I think that's going to be pretty sweet. It'll make a really cool looking blank. We'll have some areas. There's an area right here that has some clear going on uh, that I think is going to be pretty cool in, in you know, having that, that kind of vacant spot uh, when, we, when we turn it. So let's move this over here. We're going to pop this in the pressure pot. Whew, and we're ready to rock and roll. So like I was saying, the, the slow set version has a little bit that, that gel period that I'm talking about. It's, it's, it's in that, that kind of thicker state for you have longer time to work with it that way. And that's why I like the slow set version personally. Uh, most of your, the, the, the one, oh, I don't need to do that. The one advantage to some of your, your really slow setting resins, uh, epoxies and things like that, that have like a 45 minute, one hour working time is their gel period, maybe even longer in some cases. So that is one advantage to those ones, but that's kind of why I like the slow set. It just seems to work the best for most things. Kona Brewing Company, I'm telling you. I, I can't wait. We're going to Hawaii in, in, uh, in August, uh, like I said, for our anniversary. That's where we got married. And I, we always go to Kona Brewing Company while we're there. <laughs> it's so fun going to the brewery. Uh, they have, they actually, uh, I forget what day a week of the week it is, but they have one day where their brewmaster just makes up stuff like random types of beers. And uh, so you can taste them. It's really cool. You can taste the different random ones. We had a really good one. It was like caramel and I don't know what they, they put all kinds of crazy stuff. It tasted like a, like a caramel sundae. <laughs> it was beer though. It was good. So let's see. What's the temp? I, I'm not sure what the temp was. Um, probably like 105 or actually i don't know what that was probably 110 or so at least so anyway let's see here oh drive a cab at night nope that would be a little bit harder maybe i should have like a maybe i should just rip the audio out and, and do like a podcast of these i might be able to do that that'd be something to think about let's see here yeah, Bill, you could do that with the ca different colors in each cavity and then cast the whole thing. That'd be kind of cool. Um, I've done something kind of similar, so, like, like that. Uh, with It was a different type of... Let's see if I have the thing here. I, I think I do. I have it? Yeah. Uh, they were like nut pod things, and I made a seam ripper out of it. And I basically used Illumilite uh, white resin. Doesn't really matter. I just, yeah, I use one resin. Uh, let's come over here. I use one resin and, and filled the little nuts. Am I on the camera? Yeah. Uh, you know, with, with a, a, an opaque color and then came back and, and we cast the, those nuts. There, there's a good view of one uh, in, in resin. It's a good way to go. It's a cool, cool way to do it. Takes, it's just, it takes longer, you know. So anyway, I think that's all that I got for tonight, guys. Uh, I'm going to need to pick up some more of those walnut shells. They were cool. Now, the blanks we make today uh, are going to go up on my short run section of my website. Eventually, I'll get uh, you know the pictures and all that stuff loaded up there. So it'll probably be a week and a half or so, but I'll have those up there if anybody wants to pick one of those guys up. Uh, yeah, so next, I don't know what we're doing next week. Uh, Working on a video though this weekend. So for Sunday, there's a, I'm, I'm, I should have a really, I'm really excited about this video. It's gonna be a fun one. It'll be kind of a wrap up um, of the, the multiple stage pours, the, the embedding objects and resin, you know, all the tests that we did with the dice. There was a reason I was doing that. And uh, this week's video should kind of bring that kind of full circle with a, a little a way that you can deal with that. You know, we were getting a, a, a witness line in those blanks and I, I never found a way to fix it. So we kind of came up with a project and a way to utilize that witness line uh, to make a really cool blank. So be checking that out on Sunday. It should be up on about 8.30 a.m. my time. Uh, but yeah, so next week, Friday, 3 p.m. Pacific time, we'll do another live stream. So I hope you guys can make it there. And anyway, I hope you guys have a great rest of the evening and have a great weekend. Get in the shop, make something, do some resin casting. So let's see here. Real quick before I leave, I'm going to just check and make sure I'm not missing anything. 
Seems like there's more things. I'm <laughs> sorry. Oh, uh, you just you just got here. Well, the replay. You can actually. You're. You should be. You should be able to just like rewind it if you want to. You know, watch it right now. Uh, and then the the replay will be up probably. I don't know, like Monday or Tuesday next week. But it, it'll be available if you want to kind of do it now. So <laughs> sorry about that. I've been kind of getting on it. We we, we didn't have a lot to do tonight. Uh, not, not hours worth anyway. So anyway, let's see. Do I? What do I recommend for a beginner? Um, it just depends. You know, if you're if you think you're serious enough, uh, I was talking about the pressure pot. If you're serious enough, uh, you really think that you want to get into it, um, and and you're you're willing to pay for a pressure pot, Alumalite Clear is a really good resin. I, I like it personally. However, saying that, you know, if you're a beginner, what, what I kind of recommend is maybe try a couple. Um, you know, get, find one of those. Uh, Liquid Diamonds is a good epoxy. I like it. It's thin, works great for pen blanks and all kinds of different stuff. Um, so, you know, Liquid Diamonds is a, a good brand. I know that a lot of people like Royal Palm. I've never tried it. Frankly, I don't think it really matters <laughs> which resin you try as long as you try something. Um, and if you're just getting into it, I do have an ebook that kind of, it'll help you kind of, it, it's meant for somebody that literally is like, I want to get into casting and I'm just not really, I don't exactly know how everything works. Um, it's not going to, it's not a, an ebook about how to make pen blanks or something like that. It's just about resin casting and like the basics and understanding, you know, what's the difference between resins. There's three different types, you know, what tools and supplies do you need? Uh, so I have that ebook on my website if you're you're interested in in looking at that. Uh, I recommend checking it out because I think it'll kind of help you kind of understand what you're dealing with. So I recommend that. But uh, eat really either way, you can get into it. You know, start making some blanks out of PVC pipes and just use some you know whatever epoxy you want and just kind of get an idea. Get in there and try it out. Um, so, you know, it doesn't really matter, I guess. <laughs> it's kind of my answer as long as you, you know, try something. Um, again, it kind of depends on what you want to do, though. Uh, there are different formulas that work better for different types of things. So, that, and that's, again, that's kind of where that ebook kind of comes in. It, it should help you kind of understand, you know, okay, well, I want to do these things. Let me go and look for resins that do exactly what I want. So, anyway, guys, I hope you guys have a, let's see, make sure you eat at Greek Marina. Where's that at? Greek uh, in Hawaii? Well, we're going to the. Is it at the on the Big Island? Huh. Let's see. Let me just make sure I'm not missing anything else. Okay. Let's see. Okay, I don't think I'm missing anything else. All right, guys. Anyway, I hope you guys have a great rest of your evening and have a great weekend. Uh, check out that video on Sunday, and I will see you guys all next Friday at 3 p.m. Pacific time. Have a good night. And happy casting. That's, that's going to be my new tagline. Happy casting. What do you guys think of that? Leave that in the comments, too. Oh, I got to push the button to stop. So anyway, see you guys.